Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I own Word Therapy Publishing and Alphabet Theater Workshop. But many of you know me as Wise Courtship. Because of my book with a three-step system, it will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. And we come together every Sunday at 3 o'clock PM so that we can encourage each other, empower each other, read the word together, pray, and um, and just really um, just commune together. And we've been doing this for a long time, okay, very long time. I want to say hello to everyone on Periscope. I've been broadcasting to you for nearly seven years, and um, I think I've been doing the Facebook Live maybe for about five. And so um, we just come together, and I thank you guys for supporting me and supporting um, this ministry. We're actually, um, many of you guys have named the claim long time ago. So I thank you guys so much for being a part of that. Good to see you, Tracy. Happy Resurrection Day to you as well. Um, this is also an anniversary for me. No, not a wedding anniversary, but it is my baptismal anniversary. I say baptismal because I received Christ before that, but I was baptized on Easter Sunday. So it's been a lot of years. Okay, many of y'all are not even as old as I have been a Christian, okay? <laughs> so thank to God, or to all God be the glory in everything. So make sure, guys, that you are sharing this broadcast by touching, yeah, like, way down there. Yeah, way down there. You can do on Facebook, you can do a watch party, you can um, share with all your followers, um, you can invite people into the broadcast, you can put it onto your timeline. If you're watching me on Periscope and get to see each and every one of you, um, you can share with all your followers, you can tweet it out, okay? And you can um, put it onto Facebook. So please do that, ma'ams and sirs, so that people will be blessed by what we have to say on today, okay? <laughs> on today. So today we're going to talk about Christ in crisis. We've been talking a lot about crisis, basically a series. Um, and those of you who've been rolling with me in Periscope, you know that I don't plan on a series and I don't necessarily plan what I'm necessarily going to say. The Lord just drops that in my spirit and that's what happens. Good to see you, Intercessor uh, 322. Uh, three tw yeah, 322. Good to see you here on Periscope. Um, and we're going to get started in a moment. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Christ and crisis. But before we do that, I want to just do some commercials. And while everyone is getting onto the broadcast, I want to remind you that you can go to my website, wisecourtship.com, uh, for any of the informational products, um, services, and what have you. Many of you know that um, I teach people about relationships God's way. So make sure that you um, are in tune with that. And then I have my digital products, my ebooks, my e courses, the digital products at um, bit.ly forward slash shop Tony. But if you go to wisecourtship.com, you'll get there too as well. And we have started a series of helping people create streams of income. Um, I've been talking about this for a long time. I've been talking about online businesses. I've been talking about um, businesses you can do from home. I've been talking about that for a long time. I've been trying to get people to get on board. And now we are all forced to do it. Okay. <laughs> So come into the course. This is part one, bit.ly forward slash create streams part one. Make sure that you get part of that first course and then it will lead you into the second and the third and the fourth course. And before you know it, you'll have various streams of income. All right. With that being said, let's get on my glasses here. Make us sure, guys, that you are sharing this 
and um, we're going to go ahead into the, the lesson quickly. And so we're going to read two scriptures today. The first one I'm going to get started with, and then we're going to go into the second one. And the first one is coming from Deuteron Deuteronomy 31, 6. Deuteronomy 31, 6, talking about Christ in crisis. Good to see each and every one of you who are coming on. Good to see you. Make sure you share this broadcast, guys. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. Make sure you share this broadcast. Good to see each and every one of you. So, okay, we're going to read um, Deuteronomy um, 31, 6, and it reads, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, or you could say the crisis. Do not be afraid or terrified because of the crisis, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. So here the scriptures is telling us to be strong and to be courageous. This is God himself speaking to us. God himself in this in this particular passage, he's talking to the children of Israel. But we know that we can use these words in our lives even today. He's telling us to be strong and to be courageous. OK, we cannot do it in of ourselves. <clears throat> He has to help us, but he says he will be with us. That's why he's telling us to be strong and courageous because the Lord, your God goes with you. You can be strong knowing that God is right there by your side. There's no reason to fear. There's no reason to be shaken. There's no reason to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Because when you know that God is by your side, good to see you, Sean. Happy Resurrection Day to you and your family as well. Good to see you on today. When you know that God is by your side, there is, you, there's no reason to fear or to, to worry, okay? Because God is right there by your side. Also says, um, the Lord God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. We talked a lot about um, different types of crisis, having faith in crisis and um, um, having peace in crisis. And what helps us to get through that? Well, good to see you, Brittany. What helps us to get through that, what helps us to have faith in crisis is knowing that God will never leave us here once. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. See, man is iffy. Sometimes they only want you because you look good to them or they think you're smart or they, you're talented or you have money or um, for that moment when they're needing something, then they want you. OK, but as soon as they're tired of you, or as soon as they get what they want or as soon as um, sometimes they want to be there, but they're just physically not able or maybe they're not mentally able. Maybe this crisis, this crisis right here is something that they cannot handle and they cannot help you. Maybe they always had money to bail everybody out, to help everybody out. But when you get there, they can't seem to help you. Whatever the case may be, whether it's purposeful or whether it's not purposeful, whether they're not intending to do it, they are like man is 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 fickle. Is that man is limited, even if their heart is right. But God will never forsake us. He will never leave us. He will always be there for us. So we draw nigh to Him. If we cling to Him, He will cling to us. If we move close to Him, He will move close to us. Good to see you, chick. Good, um, Pastor Audrey. <laughs> I get to see you. Great to see to you as well. So listen, we just got finished reading. We just got finished reading Deuteronomy 31, uh, 6. Um, and it says, be strong and be and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them or because of the crisis. You can put that in there. For the Lord, your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh my gosh, what wonderful. What sage, good to see you. Good to see you on Periscope and Pastor Chick is following us on um, on Facebook. So good to see you. Good to see each and every one of you. Listen, that is so comforting to know that as, as long as we got God by our side and he's there, he's there whether you're paying attention to him or not. But if you can plug into him, good to see you, Wendy. Oh my goodness, we got... Live stream royalty on here. Wendy Key, good to see you, darling. Good to see you. Um, listen, and she's joining us on um, via Facebook. As long as we keep our hands in God's hands, as long as we connect to him, as long as we connect with him, we don't have to fear. 
we can be strong and we can be courageous. So I want to read another scripture to you. Now, normally I stick with one, but I want to read something from the New Testament. I read something from the Old Testament. I want to read something from the New Testament. And we're going to John 14, 27. John 14, 27. And let me just say, see if I got to say hi to somebody else here. Yes, to God be the glory for all that he has done. Listen, John, 20, John 14, 27, New International Version. Peace I will leave you. This is Jesus speaking. The other scripture was God speaking, but this one is Jesus speaking. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You know, how many people know, and I want to hear you in the chat box, how many people know that when Jesus gives you peace, <laughs> you got peace. You got it. It's there. You just need to unwrap it. You just need to sit in it and bask in it. God has already given you peace. He's already given you something that's going to settle you. You can't be peaceful in of yourself. You can't do it alone. You can't say, well, you know, I'm just going to pull myself up by my bootstrap. I'm just going to put my brave girl, my brave girl underwear on. I'm just going to put my little Superman cape on and I'm going to be brave. You can't do it in of yourself. You need God to help you. In Deuteronomy, God himself did it. In, in, in John, Jesus is saying, my peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. See, we look at the way the world operates in this situation when it comes to peace. Well, if I got the right house, if I got the right car, the right degrees, if I'm situated, you got people now in this crisis, guys. You got people now who are sitting in mansions. Oh my goodness, somebody put mansions in the chat box. We got people who are sitting in mansions and they're complaining. Oh my God. We've got people in mansions and they're fearful. We've got people who've got all the money, all the education, all the power, all the knowledge. Good to see you, Doreen. Good to see you on today. Um, she's watching us via, um, y'all put some good stuff up on here. Let me put some good this stuff up here. Some of the stuff that y'all are saying. Listen, some people have all of what the world says that you need. And yet they're fearful, yet they're crumbling under a crisis, yet they do not have the peace. You cannot get the peace in of yourself. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care if you're the right pedigree, you live on the right side of the street. You need God to give you the peace that only, uh, that will pass, surpass all understanding. You get that from God himself. Oh my God. Anybody agreeing with that on today? Ooh, hallelujah. All right, so let's look at um, John 14, 27. He also says, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Wow, it's something when your heart, when, when your heart feels like it, it's all clouded with doubt. It's all clouded with fear. It's all um, filled up with anxiety. When it gets to your heart, when your heart is not peaceful, it affects all of your body. And he says, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't do that. Just relax. I got you. I got this. There's no reason for you to fear. There's no reason for you to be ruffled. I am in control. Somebody who believes that, could you put that in the chat box? God is in control. And when, when you realize that, when you realize that God is in control, when you realize and you know something about God's character, that's another thing. We have to teach that maybe some other time. I think we have stopped teaching about God's character. Because if you knew God's character, some of that stuff won't get you worried. Some of that stuff won't get you razzled and frazzled because you know that God wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know that God is still in control. You know that God has all power in his hands. That even if we don't see the plan, he has a plan. I wish somebody would help me in this chat box today. God is in control. Anybody glad that God is in control? The president, he has his place, but I'm glad he's not in ultimate control. 
world leaders in the union, they have their place, but I'm glad they're not in control. Even our mothers and fathers, we love them, but I'm glad they're not in control. Our pastors, God bless them, but I'm glad they're not in control. I'm glad I'm not in control. <laughs> I'm so glad that God is in control. Because if we were in control, we, we are skewed. We can be biased. Sometimes we don't think straight. Maybe we didn't get a meal that day and things could go awry. Oh, my gosh. But God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So where is Christ in this crisis? He's all in the crisis. When you looked at the disciples when they were on a on a ship and or boat rather, and, and, and they were going somewhere, and, and and then you know there were storms and waves and winds, and it was just it was terrible. It looked like they were going to die, and Jesus was there on the boat sleep because he knew who was in control. He was not worried about it. Oh, if we can get to that point where we can just relax in God and say, you know what, God, you're in control. And because you're in control, I know I'm going to be all right. And I say this all the time. You know, I'm a person who loves to read books. My mother is a retired director of a library. I love books. I'm one of the people that like to consume books, you know, <laughs> just inhale them. I love books. And um, sometimes a book gets good and you want to be tempted to look in the back of the book and see how it's going to end. <laughs> But when it comes to the Bible, you can look in the back of the book. Somebody put in the chat box, look in the back. You can look in the back of the book. And when you get to Revelations and you read Revelations, you find out no matter what happens on this side of heaven, no matter how it goes down, that in the end, we win. Oh, my gosh. And how do we win? It's because we're celebrating now Resurrection Day. We're celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ, he lived, he died, and he rose again. And when he rose again, he rose with all power in his hand. And because of the life he lived and the sacrifice he made, and because he got up again, now we can rise. We can live again in Christ. We don't have to have fear we don't have to worry, even though we're in a crisis. He showed us through his example that everything, somebody put everything in the chat box, everything is going to be all right. Yes, indeed. So listen, we're going to go ahead and get to praying. We're going to go ahead and pray at this moment. Um, and listen, you know, just like any other um, holiday time, um, I like to every day at 11 o'clock, I like to do what I call a Thanksgiving prayer. Now, I know that some of you guys have prayer requests, so you still can put your prayer requests up at any time during this prayer, because I'm not going to say your prayer request out loud on today, but I am going to pray for it when I see it in the chat box. You know, when I get off, I'm going to pray for it. Other people who are in the chat box are going to also pray for you, but I'm going to do a Thanksgiving prayer on today. I believe a Thanksgiving prayer is important because sometimes we just need to sit down and stop asking for stuff. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes we just need to go ahead and just thank God for what he's already done and thank God for who he is. And if you're in agreement with me, I, I pray that you'll pray along with me. But I'm going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Yes, even in the midst of a crisis, even in the midst of a situation, God is still due all the glory and all the honor. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you, oh God. We give you all honor, glory, and praise, recognizing you are in control, recognizing that you can bring us out of any crisis, that even as we're in the midst of it, that you are in the midst of the crisis with us. God, we love you, and we bless you, and we adore you. Come on, y'all. Raise your hands. Say in the chat box what you're thanking God for. God, we just honor you on today. God, first of all, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us for the things that we've done wrong and said wrong and places we've gone we shouldn't have gone. But most importantly, God, forgive us for not recognizing that you have control, you have the power, you have the peace, that you are able to sustain us, that you are able to, to provide all of our needs. Oh God, we ask that you forgive us if we've forgotten that, if we've turned away from that in some way. God, we just love you. 
and we honor you. We thank you, oh God, for life. We thank you for strength. Anybody grateful for your health today? God, we thank you for being healthy even in this crisis. We thank you, oh God, for keeping us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for, for um, providing for us. We thank you, oh God, that even some of us who lost jobs and, and lost uh, uh, wages, oh God, somehow you are pulling us through. We thank you, oh God, that many of us still even have our uh, place, our jobs and our um, uh, modes of working and, and making money. God, we honor you today. God, we thank you, oh God, that our families are well, oh God. And those who may have um, become ill, oh God, you bring them through in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for those who are uh, who are um, bereaved, oh God, but we thank you for the memories, oh God, of the people that you have brought in our lives. God, we thank you, oh God, for um for having time that we shared one with the other. God, we thank you, oh God, for food on the table. Anybody grateful for clothes to wear, oh God? We thank you for sight. We thank you that we can hear. We thank you that we have a place to shelter in place. We thank you for a roof over our, over our heads, God. You didn't have to do it. And God, for those of us who may be uh, trying to make it on the street without shelter, um, and during this time, someone has brought us in. God, we give you glory. Somebody raise your hand and tell God, thank you. We give you honor, oh God. We bless you on today. You didn't have to do it, oh God, but you did. We thank you for our places of worship. And we thank you, oh God, for this mode of live stream and technology, oh God, where we can still come together and worship you. We thank you for ingenuity, oh God, some places of worship who are doing other things, oh God, to still keep the distance and still be able to worship God. We thank you for a creative mind. Somebody ought to bless them today. God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for your son, for what he has done for us, oh God. It couldn't have been easy. It could not have been easy. Some believed, some didn't believe. Some were cruel, oh God. Some were unkind, oh God, to go to the cross and to sacrifice everything, oh God. God, we, we love you and we praise you for that. We thank you for, for, for Jesus. We thank you for what he's done for us so that now we can come to you and speak to you and cry out to you. Anybody grateful today? <laughs> God, we love you. We thank you, God, for your character. You're not wishy-washy. You're not some tiny. You're not a uh, 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 schizophrenic. You are good and you are always good. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God, we thank you for your sovereignty. That even sometimes when things don't go our way, you still know what's best. God, we bless you on today. We honor you on today. Anybody honoring God on today? Anybody grateful that they're still in the land of the living? God, we bless you. We thank you for the word that nourishes us, that encourages us, that empowers us. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides our life from day to day, that if we don't know what to do, we can just lean on the Holy Spirit to give us direction, to give us guidance, to give us wisdom, God. We bless you on today and we honor you. Somebody honor the Lord on today. We honor you and we love you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, that is a Thanksgiving prayer. And if you do have a prayer request, you still can put it up through the chat box. We will be praying for you because we know that this can be um, a tough time for some. And many have lost loved ones. I mean, I've lost loved ones, several actually. Um, and just being shocked all the more, all the more. Um, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Audrey is on here and uh, uh, um, Duran is here and, um, you guys know some of the ones that we're talking about. We lost some several people here that we love dearly, dearly. And I'm pretty sure that some of you have as well. Oh, uh, good to see you, Arlene. Good to see you. I know that some of you have as well, and, um, we're definitely keeping you, uh, in prayer. Uh, some of you have loved ones that are now even, uh, in the hospitals as we speak, um, trying to, um, 
to uh, work through and, and be healed and recover from COVID-19. And some of us were not well ourselves. And by speaking of that, I want to thank everyone who prayed for me. Um, I usually don't get sick. And um, I got sick and I don't know what it was, but it wasn't good. <laughs> but I thank God and I wasn't and it got cut and curtailed very much. So, you know, I'm a Jew and a vegan and and honey, and I'll be praying to that. <laughs> and I thank God for y'all prayers. Rosemary, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. All of you who are joining us from um, Facebook and oh, my goodness, is that classic champion? From Periscope, good to see you, darling. Good to see you, Classic Champion. Good to see each and every one of y'all come in here. But listen, I know that sometimes things can seem like it's pretty bad. And and for a lot of you, for a lot of you, listen, not let's not. You know, sometimes when people are um speaking or preaching or whatever, they just assume everybody's falling apart. Everybody ain't falling apart, honey. <laughs> I'm not one of them falling apart. I know that's right. Uh, she said, let me put this up here. She said, somebody's praying for me. Everybody is not falling apart. Uh, classic champion, we're praying for you. We're, we're praying for you. You married your husband in the hospital. Is that what you're saying? Oh, my goodness. Well, congratulations if that's what you're saying. Uh, congratulations to you. And we're also praying for your husband. We're praying for your husband. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, uh, Rosemary. Thank you. And so. All of us aren't falling apart, that's first of all. But second of all, um, many of you already know what to do. You know how to get on your knees and you know how to pray and whatever. But we just wanna encourage you, whether you are the person who knows who to turn to or whether you're a person who has no clue who to turn to. Some of you have no clue who to turn to. And listen, while you are watching me, many people who watch me on Periscope especially, um, but some on Facebook, because some of them have followed me from Periscope to Facebook. But many of you don't even live in the U.S. Most of the people who watch me, especially when they watch on the replay and stuff like that, they, they're not even from the U.S. They're from the U.K., they're from Turkey, they're from Pakistan, they're from um, the Caribbean, the Bahamas, they're from, oh gosh, y'all shout it out, they're from uh, Scotland. Y'all going to kill me later on the replay. <laughs> I said, you ain't called my country, honey. They're from Africa, okay? And there's a lot of countries in Africa, um, but they are um, like Abuja and um, Lagos and um, Nigeria. I mean, it's so many of y'all, so many of y'all that watch me. And there's so much going on all around the world. And there's some of you know exactly, when I talk about Christ and the crisis, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know that. Hey, Alexander, good to see you. Good to see you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. He's joining us from Facebook. But there's some of you who are watching me and you have no idea about this Christ in the crisis. You have no idea. And so you have to read your word to get to know him better. OK, you have to open up your Bible and read the word to get to know him better. But to have a relationship with him, it doesn't take much. And I believe it's of my belief that I don't know how people operate without him. If you believe that, tell me in the chat box. I don't know how you make it without him. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I believe that he died on the cross for our sins. That means the things that we do wrong because we don't we don't we're not perfect people. We miss the mark. And truth be told, many of us will keep going down a wrong path if we don't have him to guide us and to direct us. And it's that belief that he is God's son, Jesus, that Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross for our sins. It's that confession that I make out my mouth, that I say it, I believe it. Not only I believe it in my heart, but I say it out loud. I believe in my heart, I confess it. Just that makes me a Christian. And then because I love him, I end up living the way that's pleasing to him. You say, how do I even know that? I know that from reading the word. I know that from reading his word. Yes, indeed. I know that. You say someone is of yes, indeed. I know that from reading the word. I can't make it without it either, DeRay. I don't know how people do it. I couldn't. I couldn't. Listen, I told people that I was going to take some time to tell you about God and how Christ is for me. Let me tell you something. I cannot live my life biting my nails. 
can't up at night worrying about how things gonna turn out. I can't. I go to sleep every night, snore and slob every night. <laughs> I feel real good. And the only reason why I can feel real good is not because I'm silly, not because I don't know what's going on in the world, because I'm very, very in tune with that. I, I watch the news like everybody else, but I don't just accept man's report. I don't go out blindly. But some of us be like, we covered by the blood and we just go out there, no mask, no nothing, just doing whatever. I don't do that because if you read the word, it will give you some wisdom, some sense. Okay. <laughs> But it gives me such peace. I've lived up. I've lived down. I've lived all around. In every state that I've lived in, I've been content because I've had God in my life. Yes, I got degrees from an Ivy League school, too. Yes, I grew up with some money. Not everybody can say that. Yes, I've had some positions all my life. Yes. I might have lived on the right side of the tracks too, but still and all, that ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> I will tell you that it has nothing to do with it. So I can tell you that the education has nothing to do with it. Your good looks has nothing to do with it. Your position, your power, your circumstance has nothing to do with it. It is God who does it for you. And if you don't see it today, dear ones, that God is in control. Everything we said we wasn't going to do, God is saying you're going to do it. <laughs> Everything that we said that uh, that we couldn't handle, God is showing that we can handle. Every time we said we weren't going to take care of this population of people or we can't, we can't provide health care, we can't pay a decent wage, we can't do, God is saying, oh, yes, you can. <laughs> Are y'all listening to God talk? People say they don't hear God talk. He doesn't always talk with a voice coming out of the clouds. He talks sometimes just by things changing and shifting and transitioning. And Jesus, even though he got up from the grave, and this is when we celebrate him getting up from the grave, that's not the end of the story, y'all. Huh? The end of the story is that he's coming back. He is coming back for us. And you need to find out if you're ready. And if you're not ready, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, you will not be ready when he comes back and you will not be able to live with him forever. Because down here, I know some of us want to stay a little longer. We don't want to die today. I get that. But things are getting worse. It's not all that great. OK, y'all make it nice, but it's not all that great. Not compared to heaven. And I want to be with him. I want to be able to see my friend LaVoy again. I want to be able to see my friend Ver, uh, uh, Vernon Wardrick again. I'm oh, not Vernon Wardrick. I'm sorry. Um, Vincent. Vincent Northern again. I want to see my girlfriend who died of leukemia. I want to see so many people who went on before us. I want to see them again. Good to see you, Yeats. Good to see you. Yes, indeed, Rose Royalty. He's coming back like he said he would. And I want to thank everyone who watches this broadcast. I want to thank you so much for that. You guys have been riding with me for a long time. And I also want to say to all of the pastors, all of the evangelists, all those who are trying to um, definitely keep their congregations together via live stream. First of all, I say welcome to Social Media Ministry, honey. <laughs> I said, welcome, honey, because we've been doing this a long time. Welcome. And um, it's going to be all right. I think what the Lord might be saying to you is that ministry, even though we say it with our mouths, you want to share a story, even though we say it with our mouths, ministry is not just the four walls. Ministry is out there, out here. In all those countries I told you about that I minister to, the people have been ministered to for a long time. Out of the walls, people. Some people I'll never see. I'll never see them. I'm going to share with you guys um, soon um, some of the reach of the videos. You you'll just be shocked. Some of the reach of the videos. Okay, some of the viewers, and that's why I leave it up there. Some of this, some of these shows that we don't look at anymore. They they'll start off with a hundred views or whatever, and then maybe a month later, two months, it's like a thousand, eighteen hundred, three thousand, four thousand views. 
Okay. And so God has really, really blessed. And he's saying, listen, y'all better get on out there. Get on out there and tell people about Jesus and tell this dying world. And we're dying. Tell this confused world. Tell this world that's in a crisis that Jesus saves. And that's why we celebrate Resurrection Day, because he got up. And not only did he get up, he got up with all power in his hands and he is coming back and he will reign forevermore. That's the end of the story. If you want the details, you got to read the book yourself. Okay. <laughs> well, I got to go. I got to go. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, oh, I meant to say, too, I guess maybe in the next broadcast, I have um, I, like I've been doing social media and live streaming for a long time. And I'll be doing some courses in regards to that for um, for um, like us. I'll talk about, um, you know, making money through live stream, but also through our businesses and our ministries about how to use social media to enhance um, what you are doing. And some of us are getting onto social media and I'm so glad that you are and you're doing well, but there's some other things you need to know that will make or break it, honey. Yes, indeed. So I will tell you about that in the coming, in the coming weeks. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. This is Tony Henderson Mayers. I can be reached on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social, me social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. This is Tony. Remember, I help you detect a lover worth living. Bye. Mm -hmm.